I've got two tasks here. The first is to glue the glass back on the top and the second is to deal with the poor connection for the selenium cell. We'll take that top cover off. Now there are two screws at the base here hold the movement into the mount. They're not loose. If they'd been loose that might have been my problem but it's not the case. I'll remove those screws. Now there are two solder joints here, one for the clip to the back of the selenium cell here and another one from the front of the selenium cell here. I've got to get onto those with a soldering iron and break those solder joints back shortly. You're right with both of those solder joints broken, peel that one back slightly, I can lift the meter movement out of the housing. You have to be very cautious at this stage. This is very delicate. It's completely exposed at the bottom. If you do any damage to it, your chances of having a working meter again are very slight. I'll put that to one side. Here's the clip that provides the contact to the back of the selenium cell. You can see it's quite thin, it's reasonably springy. It just needs to be bent to give it a bit more tension. The selenium cell itself is loose here in the housing. You can pull that out. This contact here, this strip here, makes against the other contact here. Chances are that's a bit oxidised and not um, making good contact. So I'm just going to wipe that with some contact cleaner. Likewise that contact in here and this piece and then slide it back together. That'll be the date of manufacture on the back of that, October 56. So that's got a bit of age to it. Now these contacts don't look particularly oxidised, this is a little bit dirty looking. I think that'll be fine. Right, let me put this back together. Make sure we get the selenium cell in the right way round. Put the clip back in. I'm going to bend that a bit more. I think I can get a bit more tension out of that. That should work. Now I've got to get the meter back in the housing.
it's difficult to get the screws started because that contact will be pushing the movement across. All right, I've got one screw started and running nicely. You often have to do a bit of toing and froing. Sometimes it's a case of getting a screw jammed in there. And that's enough to pull it along across enough that you can get the other screw correctly positioned and tightened up. Like a lot of these things, I, I imagine that they had a jig that they used in the factory which made all this very easy to, to achieve. Right, I've got to solder my connections back in place again. And, uh, and hopefully we'll have a working meter. Well that was a success, that's back together, good, making good contact, it doesn't look to me like that meter is anything like accurate, uh, it looks quite insensitive to me but that's, that's what we've got. The main thing is that it works, which means that the camera looks like it functions as it should do. You always better to use a a modern known good exposure meter with old cameras. Uh, selenium cells don't really work well after 60 years. Okay, so I'll pop that to one side. I want to clean this. I want to clean that old adhesive off there and then glue the glass back in place. Let's put that cover back on the top. And fit its retaining screws in place. have the glass here cleaned and ready to go back in place. Here you can just about see it there, it's almost invisible. A couple of spots of adhesive would be a good thing. I think three dots would be the right number. One here. One there. And one there. This is very thin, this glass, it's probably Microsoft slide cover glass or something along those lines. It 
and being very thin it's very fragile and easily broken so take care not to do so well that's our meter back together all working good connection all the time and I want to clean the top cover and we'll put that back on the camera after that and the top cover is here this is pretty grimy I'll start by removing that shoe and hook the spring from the frame counter remove the two screws here that hold the mask in place that holds the front glass in the top housing for the viewfinder windows I want that knob off because I know this is sticky that needle wasn't tracking correctly undo that screw be very cautious dealing with that screw there's virtually no spares to be had anywhere and it's easily broken you can see all the grime and rubbish there all that needs to be cleaned away that grease is very sticky and dried and nasty bit of naphtha on a cotton bud start cleaning this away there's a lot of grit here the camera must have been somewhere where a lot of dust or grit could settle on it and although that was probably wiped away from exposed surfaces it had found its way into places that you can't readily clean like this I'm going to remove that from the top of the camera completely that follow a needle mechanism so I can clean it better two small screws hold that in place it's not uncommon for them to have worked their way loose yeah this is a bit gooey you can see the the old grease here which is running down we want rid of all of that Just checking the movement of this, making sure that it does move smoothly. It appears to. There's nothing particularly untoward about that. Alright, let's have a look at the top cover. Some of that's old grease that had just run in there by itself. Some of it is dissolved grease from the naphtha when I was cleaning the, the top. It's not as dirty on the inside as it is on the outside, this camera. Now this is corrosion here rather than dirt. I 
and that corrosion will be in the chrome layer and the more you clean it the less chrome you'll have there so we'll just get all the loose stuff off get that nice as, as clean as we can reasonably get it if I tack that with metal piles we'll have a copper finish instead of a greenish finish There's an awful lot of tiny scratches on this camera which makes me think that it was handled roughly. It's seen a lot of work and was not in a leather case. Counter seems a little bit stiff. I need to clean the glass in here. If you find a piece at the back in the window for the meter. That looks good. All right, I'll get this clean. Just wipe that over with some naphtha to remove any loose dust or deposits. Clean these two pieces of glass. Right, I'll start putting these bits and pieces back in place. There's the two spacers for the frame. Let's see if I can get it screwed back in. Just run those screws in very lightly. Okay, yeah. That's the large of the windows. Slide that down into place. The smaller of the windows. Try.
get that position correctly, it's not sitting right. That's better. Check that the other end's correct. It's not. That should be good. Do those two screws up. The return spring for the frame counter. That connected there. There it is. See our frame count is now sprung loaded. The frame count still seems a little bit stiff. We put a drop of naphtha in there. Work that. Maybe some. Sticky old grease in there needs to be rinsed out. Apply a little bit of synthetic grease here. No, it still feels too stiff to me. I'm going to pull that glass out so I can do a proper cleaning of that. I'm going to need more flushing with solvent to uh, get out whatever's sticking that up. the top cover together, frame counter moving smoothly. There was some distortion here so that thing was canted off to one side and that's why it was unusually stiff. However everything's back together, nice clean windows, meter dial, follow a needle that moves smoothly, all good to go. Let's bring this back into the picture. First thing we want here is a film release button. And we can put the meter back in place. Well, that screw there we has to go through the meter. Now, while I'm here, I'll apply 
bit of grease there. Now this screw is going through a, there's a shim washer underneath that plate so I don't want to lose that or disturb it, So, but we should be good to go. There's a screw that goes in at this end. And of course the shutter release button. Let's try the top cover on and see how the frame counter goes. We'll probably need some adjustments since we've changed the shutter cocking rack. The frame counter button does not want to come up. It must be trapped underneath the shutter release. It is. That's better. Just checking the frame counter button is free. That moves smoothly. I'll check the movement of the counter. It's throwing slightly too far. So I'll adjust that here. Film release button is not playing the game. Sit tight on the shaft. Shouldn't be. Those numbers line up nicely. Shutter release functions. Film release button moves. Two screws in the top cover at this end. One screw in the top cover at this end. Check the buttons, they're still good. Collar goes on there. Here's a little spacing washer. Then the rewind. It coming up correctly? No, it's not. Now it is. At the base of the camera, we want our lever it back. Give this a wipe, get rid of any grease that might be on there.
with our leatherette and there it is. The leatherette's been all cleaned ready to go. Get this adhesive spread correctly. Looks nice and even. Put that in position. Be careful to settle the leatherette round raised bosses like on the rewind button or the boss in the centre here because leatherettes tend to shrink and don't push down flat unless you encourage them. It's looking good. And put the advance lever back on. and the patch on the advanced lever can go on. Put that in place. There is a bit of a grain to the leatherette, make sure it matches the base. And the back catch cover. See those bits only just get them in. Screw up through the cover, put the swinging arm in place, fit the spring, and fit it to the camera without disturbing anything, just like that. Run the screw down, check that it moves, put the other screw in place, tighten the two screws, check that it still moves, and that's the camera body. But what we need to find out is whether the shutter would have worked had the cocking rack actually functioned. <laughs>